Elliot Presents Talking, and today we're here to talk sports with my friend, Mike Walkuski. He's a freelance journalist whose resume includes being a former Chargers columnist for the Bleacher Report. He also used to be editor-in-chief at EDM.com. He is a sports enthusiast. What's up, Mike? Hey, Mike. Man, it's been a crazy day. I'm just, just chilling. I mean, coming off that Clippers loss today. Right, right. Uh, you, you are a Clippers fan. We should mention that first. And every time I have someone on, their team loses. So... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to it, I promise. Yeah. Yeah, so I yep. wanted to go down the playoffs list, and I say Clippers for last because I know you're really into it. So let's start off in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. So the Magics and Bucks stand at 2-1 Bucks are winning, and I want to apologize to the Magic because last week I was so disrespectful. Like, I didn't even think they were going to win a game, and they just came out the gate just, and they crushed the Bucks. Do you? They heard you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think the Bucks? have what it takes to make the NBA Finals? Uh, I think they do. I mean, I was questioning it a little bit after that first game. Yeah. Um, they come back strong. I mean, yeah. yeah, they did. Like, I think that they've finally put the right roster around Giannis. I think they have the shooters to do it. I think Chris Middleton is ready to be a, sec a legit second option for a championship team. Do and you I, really? Yeah. I mean, he, his – his shooting splits this year, he's, he's a knockdown shooter now. He is, he is, he is. I guess it's a matter of will they do it in the big games in the late rounds. And, yeah. I mean, we'll see. Like, the Eastern Conference to me is kind of a – it's up in the air, which was actually the next thing I was going to go to is the Raptors' nets in that mm -hmm. how good are these Raptors? They seem really good. Oh, man. Like, I love the way they play. I love their team ball. Nick Nurse. Yeah, coach of the year, right. coach of the year for sure. Right. I mean, losing Kawhi, having Pascal Siakam step up as your best player. Right. I mean, incredible. He's, he's a legit all star now. They they got Kyle Lowry. If you if oh, you man. saw if you it, I mean hypothetically if the Bucks and the Raptors met right now, who do you think wins the series? I would today. I would take the Bucks in seven games. Okay, all seven. But yeah. you think it's going to be a close series. I mean, that says a lot about the Raptors. You lose your yeah. best team and just uh, the best player. I know you're a Clippers fan, mm -hmm. but do you think Kawhi has a better shot of winning with the Clippers or if he stayed with the Raptors? Man, I think he would have had a better shot if he stayed with the Raptors. <laughs> I mean, some I of it has be to be real with you. Right, and some of it has to do with the fact that, like, I think the East is easier to navigate to. Mm -hmm. you know, to get. The West is loaded. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a tough route, but um, this guy, I'm just becoming a bigger fan of each time. Jimmy Butler, the Heat right now yeah. are up on the Pacers 3-0. I can't believe how good the Heat actually are already. Do you see this as a sweep? I see it as a sweep. I saw it as a sweep going into the series. In Game One, I was questioning it a little bit, but the the Heat closed it up. Yeah. Um, I think. I, I just think that the Heat, they're built like a top three seeded team. Um, Which is incredible. I didn't, like, wow. It's, did, how bad did the Sixers mess up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I should, let me, let me preface this by saying I'm also a Sixers fan. Like, my, your, my your dad's dad from right? the Philly area. Right. Um, so, I, I mean, I grew up in San Diego as a Clippers fan, but, like, my whole dad's side of the family, they're all Sixers fans. So they're, they've always been my second favorite team. AI was my favorite player growing up. Um, and I was trusting the process. And then, <laughs> and then Elton Brand had to come in. He tore that process right up. I mean, if it, they were one shot away from the Eastern Conference Finals yeah. last year. Yeah, one that's shot, what's scary. One bounce. That's what's scary. Uh, and they, instead of sticking with Jimmy, I mean, sticking with J.J. Redick, they alienated Jimmy. And Jimmy showed that even though he has – I mean, some people think he has this attitude. He has a winning attitude. That's what it is. I mean, he wants his team yes. to win. Yes. Um, and it, it rubs people the wrong way sometimes. I, but, I, I mean, I, I just think that they can't handle that. I think all real competitive people, when they happen to be on the team during losing years, just rubs off the wrong way. Like Kobe, mm -hmm. people rubbed off the wrong way when they were, the Lakers were losing. But – when they're winning, you know, it's all, you know, it's all good after that. So by now the Celtics are, have already swept the Sixers. 
do you think, I mean, we agree it's time to split the squad up. Like this isn't working, right? Yeah. I was looking at their contracts and I'm not entirely sure how to fix this team. They owe yeah. Al Horford has a $109 million contract that ends in 2023. Tobias Harris has 180 million that ends in 2024. Embiid has 147.7 million that ends in 2023. And Ben Simmons is, uh, got, uh, is eligible to sign his rookie contract extension. Is there a way, or who, who do you get rid of in this, or who can you get rid of? <laughs> I mean, who, who should they get rid of if they, if they could? Right. You know, Horford right off the bat, but I don't know who's going to take no, them without yeah, some yeah. assets attached, some first right. round picks. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, they might just have to hold on to him or buy out his contract at some point. Uh, Tobias, they overpaid. I think that they just got to ride with Tobias. I mean, I, I wish that he wasn't – he should have gotten a contract like about half that much. Yeah, that, it's, he's getting paid like a superstar. It's yeah, and I, insane. I think that that was just Elton Brand trying to come up with something after Jimmy left, uh, after J.J. <laughs> Redick left. And he was like, okay, what can I do? I give Tobias a max. I bring in Al Horford because he's got a star name. Um, but now they're stuck. I mean, I think the only real way there, I think there's no real way to fix this. I mean, I, I think that if, unless he had a time machine, man. I, <laughs> do, you, do you think Embiid and Ben Simmons can ever work together? Uh, I think those two with a lot of shooters on the perimeter without, without Horford on the team and without Harris, like if you could get rid of those two guys, get a bunch of shooters, but I don't know if that's even possible. So now I think you got, you probably got to get rid of either Ben or Embiid just to spread out the talent a little bit around the roster. Wow. That's, it's just, it's crazy how quickly things fall apart. Like yeah. it looked like they were just there and then it just, now we're already, I, I didn't, I did not see them getting swept in the first round this early into this squad and i can't yeah i can't believe it um let's hold, let's head over to the western conference uh the nuggets yeah. and jazz which is the most confusing series in my opinion because i thought the jazz were out of sync and you yeah. know mike conley went out of the bubble to see the birth of his kid and then he came back and then the nuggets looked like they were doing really well and then just donovan mitchell just started going off um, I actually personally thought Donovan Mitchell wasn't going to stay with the Jazz. What do you think? Do you think he's going to stay in Utah? Yeah. I mean, before this series, I thought that he wasn't a fit with the team anymore. I thought that mm. that – I uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if he fit Quinn Snyder's system anymore, even as a player. Um, I thought that he didn't really fit in with the team. But this series, I think, is proving me wrong. It's proving oh. a lot of people wrong. Uh, and I think if Donovan – if he can just like start to mesh with that team on a personal level, yeah, I think that they can go places. Um, they seem like I, they're I didn't like, think that was, they seem like they're like that? one player away. Yeah, and they're they're yeah they're playing really well. I I actually, I mean Mike Conley's playing really well too. I don't know what happened. He, he was playing terrible the whole year, and then he came back and he's playing yeah. really wonderful. So like, he's got a kid. Yeah, I know. Maybe that maybe that rejuvenated him. It could be. You yeah. Know? So uh, he's like uh, like Fred Van Fleet last year when uh <laughs> yeah Fred, was it Fred Jr. <laughs> yeah exactly right 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 perfect uh, which leads to probably the series that I've just not been paying attention to the most is uh, the Rockets Thunder mm -hmm. uh, the the Rockets are up two one without Westbrook so it definitely does look like they have control over the series and I'm trying to gauge is I can't tell without Westbrook if they're going to just go where they would have gone with him anyways. Cause like, it seems like they would have got out of the first round with or without him. Now that we look at how this is going and yeah. I don't see them getting past the Lakers. So yeah. I don't know what do you, what you do with the Rockets team either. Like, do you yeah. see them ever being better than, do you ever see that team getting out of the West? Man, that, that's tough. I, I'm actually a huge fan of D'Antoni small ball right now. Yeah, like yeah. I love watching it. And I'm just curious to see how it plays in a series against a team like the Lakers. Uh, well, I think it would be better off if PJ wasn't playing center, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they had like a, a really long dude like who could 
Yeah. Bust, yeah. like who can get to, get from hoop to hoop super fast, yep. fast break. Um, I mean, PJ is really good when you have like rough big guys to play against because he can body him in the post. He can play, right. play right. him out on the perimeter, but I think they need some more athleticism on that outside. Yeah, it's – do you like the Thunder team at all? Because like the Thunder also was a team where like I didn't know – what they were going to do with their pieces. Like Chris Paul's mm-hmm. contract is hard to trade, but they seem they're exactly in the same place with Russ as well, which isn't yeah. bad, but I know they have all those, you know, picks come in that they got from your team. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if Man. they're patient enough, they could build something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that, I think making the playoffs for them this year was a huge bonus. Uh, when they made that trade with, the Clippers, like they were already planning for the future. They got Shea Gilders Alexander, who's one of the leading candidates for most improved player of the yeah, year. He's playing really well. I mean, he's yeah. he's still doing great in the playoffs. Um, so I think that they have a bright future. I think if they draft well and if they're able to retain Shea, uh, I think they can have a good team. I mean, it pains me to say, but Sam Presti has always pretty much drafted well. He's, oh, yeah. yeah, he's, yeah, I, which, you know, I hate talking about the Thunder, but he is yeah. a really good executive. He really is. Uh, yeah. If you go down the list, KD, oh, yeah. Russ, Harden, Ibaka, uh, Ibaka, yeah. Stephen Adams, right. Jeff Green, oh. and they put together squads. Oh, the team that we never had. <laughs> Man. <laughs> All right, let's skip I, on to the Lakers Blazers. I know you're yeah. a huge Dame fan. I am. I, I want to read you a few quotes. Uh, Max Kellerman said, quote, Damian Lillard is like Steph Curry, but a Steph Curry who gets better in the biggest moments, end quote. <laughs> and then Kenny Smith, uh, Kenny Smith on TNT also said that Steph never had range like Dame, which da- Steph tweeted, love you. <laughs> But you tripping right now. Yeah. I for whatever reason, Steph is getting a lot of slander right now. And yeah. it's like unnecessary going on. It's it's unnecessary, man. I I mean, how quickly people forget your greatness. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I and I love Dame, but like we're in the first round. Like yeah. I and I really love Dame. I love watching him play and I think he's he's really good. But yeah. Steph also it's it's amazing because he's a two-time back-to-back MVP winner and a three-time champion. Yeah. The, yeah <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was reading and hearing when all of this is going on. And then it's so simultaneously while the Warriors are not in the bubble. It's – Yeah. I mean, I think – like I, I, I've told you before, Dame, Dame might be my favorite player in the NBA. Uh, yeah. Just for who he is off the court who he is on the court, just his whole demeanor, his whole attitude. Um, but for them to say, for Max Kellerman and Kenny Smith to say that about Steph, that's insane, man. Do you, do, you <laughs> think so, do you think any of it has to do with just clickbait? I think that has a lot to do with it. I think a lot has to do with people wanting to hate on the Warriors because of their dynasty. I think sure. people just want to like, people just want to forget it that dynasty already and hate on him. Um, it, I mean, the thing is though, without the KD free agency signing, that's pretty much what every team wants to do anyways. I mean, I mean yeah. every team would want to sign KD too, but it seems like that's the one signing that always makes people think less of him, which is odd yeah. because you draft well, you trade well, and then you sign the best player, which is pretty much everyone's goal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you can't get mad at a team for, for doing what you want to do, for doing right. what everyone wants to do. Right, 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 right. This is insane. And then uh, Paul Pierce had a quote that I, I just thought Paul Pierce was sitting on because he hates LeBron. He said, <laughs> he, hates LeBron. <laughs> he hates LeBron. He said, quote, I don't want to hear none of this goat talk no more if LeBron loses in the first round, right? Which, you know, was after game one. And I never thought the Lakers were going to lose after one game. You know, I, and I respect the Blazers. I think the Blazers are a tough, you know, series to get through. But I think Paul Pierce was sitting on something bad to happen to LeBron just to, you know, be able to say something. Do yeah. you think there is anything that can lower LeBron's legacy at this point? Because I pretty much thought it was cemented at where it's at and it can't 
go lower. It may be able to go mm-hmm. higher, but I actually don't see him going any lower than where he is in history. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no way, at least in my eyes, that he can go lower. I mean, everything he's doing right now is a cherry on the top of one exactly. of the best careers of all time. Exactly. I mean, right, right, for right. him to be playing at the level he is right now, like what he did last night. Right. I mean, right. the Blazers – the Blazers have been looking great in the bubble. Uh, yes, yes. And LeBron just turned it on last night like no other man his age like could ever right. <laughs> could ever right. really do. Right. I mean, it's the, a I can't nature. think. Yeah, I mean, Paul Pierce is a hater. He's always been a hater. <laughs> um, <laughs> was wait, was he on your team when Draymond said you're not Kobe? They don't love you like that. Was he on your team when that happened? I think so. <laughs> yep. <laughs> One of my favorite off the court moments. <laughs> man, yeah. I mean, who's going to love Paul Pierce like people love Kobe? I mean, Kobe yeah. Kobe got an entire city, entire country. He got yeah. the whole world to love him. Yeah. I and mean, for Paul Pierce to do anything, he had to get KG. He had to get Ray Allen. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, shots fired. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then that leads us to – Probably unanimously, everyone agrees, the best series of the first round. Your yeah. Los Angeles Clippers versus the Dallas Mavericks, which sits at 2-2 currently. I'm going to read you some stats. I'm not reading you Paul George's stats, so don't worry. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, please don't. It's a uh, 42-7-9, game one, 28-8-7, game two, 13-10-10, and in game three, which I believe he only had 21 minutes because he rolled his ankle. And then today, 43-17-13 for Luka Doncic. I, I, I thought he was really good, but yeah. he is becoming much better, much quicker than I think anyone anticipated, right? Yeah. Is, this, is this a nightmare for you to watch on the other side? <laughs> Actually, so first, yeah, as a Clippers fan, it is. Um, but as a basketball fan, like what he's doing, it's, it, I, love what, I love his game. I mean, I've been following him since he was playing over in Europe. Uh, and I think that what he's doing just shows that the EuroLeague is no joke. I mean, he, yeah, that's he, a good point. he tore it up there. And for some reason, the Phoenix Suns and Sacramento Kings passed on him. <laughs> well, Even at the time, like people were just like, that's, so many people are like, that's insane. Sure. Like, sure. he's a EuroLeague MVP at 18. Right. And he's showing, like, if you're able to thrive in that environment at 18, you can come over, be one of the top. I mean, he's making a case to be a top five player in the NBA at 21. Right. I think, it's I think, crazy. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what Phoenix' excuse was. I thought it was because DeAndre Ayton was a local kid, which doesn't make it a good reason to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, me and Paul, Paul Kim, we're talking about it pretty much daily, how – Vladi didn't like Luca's dad and he didn't pick him, <laughs> which is another yep. crazy reason to not pick a player. And now, you know, he's not an executive. It's, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I, Sacramento, someone tweeted out today all the players they've passed in the last like decade and it included, you know, Luca, Giannis, Devin Booker, Steph Curry. It was, it was a bunch of ridiculously long list. I mean, hindsight is 2020, but I feel like Luca had enough hype to be able to be drafted in there. And then on top of that, they have Marvin, who hasn't really done much over in Sacramento. Yeah. And then I mean, now, I think. yeah, I want to talk about your man, Playoff oh. P. Or, or as you quoted <laughs> yesterday, Pandemic P. I, I'm, just, I'm just sending over tweets that I'm seeing. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I, I saw he was, uh, what is it, 3 for 14, 3 for 16, 4 for 17 the last three games. And he had a quote after – the last game, game three, where he says, I'm no James Harden. And he's basically saying he's not just a one-way player, but I also feel like he's been getting cooked playing defense too. And then today, yeah. as Luca hit his buzzer beater, he was on Seth Curry and not yeah. Luca. I what do you think is going on with him? Is this all mental? This is getting to him, right? I think, yeah, at this point it's gotta be mental. Um I mean he, he's shown in the regular season he's He's a dominant player when he wants to be. Sure, sure. Um, and I think at this point, he is at, – at the beginning of the games, I think he's trying to do too much to get rid of that playoff P yeah, yeah, that, yeah. He, that he gave himself. Right, which he shouldn't do. <laughs> yeah. And, 
and I think he's trying to do too much. And then when he starts playing terribly, which he's done in every game so far, he just like takes a step back. Right. His defense takes a step back because he's not engaged. Like I saw so many times, like I told you, I I just tuned in for the last five minutes of regulation today, uh, and then OT. Um, even on Luka Doncic's Luka's drives to the basket when Paul George wasn't guarding him, there were so many times he was in the corner playing D and he didn't even come over to help. I mean, Luka's dropping 43 and you're not helping off of Dorian Finney-Smith or helping off of um, yep. even – I understand not leaving Seth Curry, um, sure. but like Dorian Finney-Smith, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, um, Trey Burke, you're just le- – you're staying glued to them and not even helping on Luka. Sure. Oh, even um, Seth Curry has been driving in scoring yeah. on him. It's, it's not looked good. Yeah. And then – I don't have you good, seen- good for Seth Curry. Yes. Good yes, for Seth Curry absolutely. against Paul George. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Did you see what Paul George posted on Instagram after the game? Oh, no. But so, please, please tell me. So I'm going to censor this out. He said, I don't give a it's, a... it's a meme quote. He said, I don't give a F what anybody think about me. F is you thinking about me for anyways. Laughing face emoji. And I think because he posted it, this is really bothering him. And oh, yeah. I... I mean, I don't know your thoughts on the social media era for athletes, but I feel like sometimes they do need to just get off of it. By posting that they're not bothered, you're mm-hmm. literally showing us it's bothering you. And yeah. I think Paul George right now, and I don't know how you feel as a Clippers fan, I think mentally, I, I really do think the Clippers can get past the Mavs still, mm-hmm. right? even though they've been struggling. But I'd be worried for the later rounds if Paul George's mental is just not there. And yeah. it's confusing me because I, when he was on the Pacers and they played the Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals, I thought Paul George was next. I really did. And I don't know if the injury in Vegas when he was on Team, U- Team USA changed him that much, but it does seem like mentally he's something is going on there. And yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> how optimistic do you feel about his, him performing well for the rest of the playoffs? Uh, I feel like he can play well. I don't think he's going to play up to his regular season level. I don't, I don't believe in him that much but I think he can at least be a very good starter. I mean, I think he can, but that's not, I mean, that's not Paul George and they even say that and not be certain about it. That's, that's not good. I, I also think he is living up to what he was traded for. Yeah. He was traded for so much that a good starter isn't good enough. <laughs> yeah. For what, yeah. The value the Clippers gave up. Yes. was for a top 10 player. All right. the first round picks they gave up. I mean, I think I mentioned this to you before we got on this call, but like I think if the Clippers kept Gallinari, kept Shea Gilch and Alexander, they would be in a much better place in these playoffs because both of those dudes are performing for the Thunder. Um, but I mean, Kawhi, I guess that's a non-starter because Kawhi wouldn't have even signed with the team in the first place. But right, I which, wish Kawhi which, would have seen that. Right, which I guess Clippers fan got to keep in mind that you don't have Kawhi without Paul George forcing yeah. that trade in so all right uh, i am gonna come back to the clippers so don't worry about all that right. there's, um, a, there's a lot there oh for sure so which team or do you what do you so obviously there's no home court advantage right because yeah. you know you're playing in an empty gym which team do you think benefits the most right now from no home court i had like either the mavs utah jazz and the heat although the heat might have been able to do it anyway because the pacers are still so depleted but I really yeah. do feel like the Nuggets not being home is kind of hurting them a little bit too. Yeah, I actually think that the Nuggets are hurting the most because they don't have I'm – not, I'm not sure what the elevation is in Salt Lake City, to be honest. But when people go to oh, play right. in Denver – Good point. Um, right, right. When people play in Denver, they, they get gassed, man, uh, playing true. at that elevation. Um, and their fans are loud there too. Uh, right, right. I think that that's hurting them. It's and I think that – I mean, also – the. The Sixers, I mean, they had a great home record. <laughs> you, so, <laughs> hold on. I think that... Hold on. So, you're, so the Sixers would have not been swept if there was... <laughs> they would have won one game. They won, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, man. But, but, we, I mean, but you don't think they would have won the series, right? 
No, no way. I mean, I'm just looking at their home record right now. They were uh, 31 and four at home. Wow, is that four. really their home record? Yeah, wow. they had the best home home record in the NBA. Wow. Uh, and they were 12 and 26 on the road. Wow, that's an interesting stat. So, what does that say about what does that say about them that they just can't perform on the road? I don't know. Wow. Like, I don't know. If, I don't know if Ben Simmons is playing too much Fortnite on the road or what. Wow, <laughs> could be. That's a oh, wow. That's a great interesting stat. I never knew that, huh? Then maybe the team isn't completely hopeless. They just need to figure out how to be mentally strong on the road. <laughs> yeah, just figure out a way to play be the number one seed. Yeah, number one seed, and then yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So if I could shift over to the Chargers. So oh, yeah. the interesting thing about you as a sports fan to me that relays is we've both had teams that moved away from our cities that have relocated, right? Although I don't feel like anyone in LA claims the Chargers. And oh, all no. of my San Diego friends still act and root for the Chargers as if nothing changed, right? So do you agree with that statement there? Like you don't see anyone in San Diego saying, I'm not going to root for them no more. Um, so I will say actually like most of my friends hate the chargers now. Really? Yeah. Whoa. But all of my LA friends, like nobody cares for the chargers. I can, I can definitely yeah. agree with that part yeah. of the statement. Yeah. I, I don't know. What is it about LA? They're not entirely into the NFL that much. Yeah. And I don't know if it's just, they got too many professional sports and too many things to do, but. Yeah, I went to a Seahawks Rams game in LA and it was pretty much a home game. Like I wanted to see what it was like on the other side. That was not a great first one. It felt like a home game to be honest. Yeah, yeah. like LA LA games for almost any sport. There's so many transplants from other cities. Yeah. Who move there so that there's yeah, Chargers games there are always away games. For the right. Chargers. Right. I feel bad for them. So I was reading your former articles that you've written and you did a lot of, uh, what is it, draft reports and stuff for Bleacher Report. How do yeah. you feel about their current draft? And in specific, Justin Herbert. Um, I was not extremely excited about it. I mean, I watched Justin Herbert quite a bit in college. He's yeah. got, he's the prototypical NFL quarterback, right? He's got the measurables, he's got the height. Um, but I just was never wowed by him watching him. I see that. I feel like if they get, if he's coached up and if he is receptive to everything, um, then he can be a really good NFL quarterback. Uh, but he's not, he, he doesn't inspire me as like a leader of a franchise. Ooh. Um, say it. Yeah. So I, I wanted, I wanted Tua. I wanted Tua. <laughs> I, you, ugh. I don't disagree with, I mean, I don't, so Justin Herbert went to Oregon and we don't mm -hmm. like Oregon. So I have a biased opinion. Um, yeah. I do think you guys have a pretty good squad. I really do. Um, it does seem like all you need is probably just that quarterback. Do you think, excuse me, that Herbert will have a better career than Phillip Rivers? No, I think, I think Phillip Rivers, <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's because I think really highly of Philip Rivers more than me hating on Herbert. Sure, sure. yeah, yeah. Um, I think that the, the Chargers just screwed Rivers in his entire career. Fine. I mean, either they had a great defense with – basically his whole career he didn't have an offensive line. Sure. They, they always had a terrible line. Um, and they just squandered his best years by, by blowing big games, big game after game. Um, and I, I think it's great that he'll have another shot with Indy. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a big Philip Rivers fan. So I, I think Justin Herbert can be a good NFL starter, but I don't believe in him as a star. Um, so if, like for that reason, I wanted them to either trade up for Tua or I wanted them to take like Isaiah Simmons, the linebacker out of Clemson. Yeah. Um, and then sign Cam Newton or sign, uh, I, I, sign I would, someone. I would love to revisit this after the NFL season ends. And see yeah. how this goes. Or, I mean, do you, oh, okay. So, do you think the NFL season is going to happen? I definitely I, do not think it's going to happen on time. Yeah. But do you think it's going to, okay, maybe not happen is the word. Do you think it will start, finish, have a playoffs and a Super Bowl champion? I think, 
I mean, I, I think it'll start delayed. I I don't feel confident about a Super Bowl. I don't. I think some. I mean, yeah. with the way that they're they're so. I guess that I feel like they're just not taking coronavirus seriously. They're not taking. Which also Everything might be like, I mean, the thing I've, I've asked my friends is like, so let's say they have a season and they say, if you get, you know, COVID that you just, you go home, you quarantine and the team just goes on and plays, right? Are they really yeah. going to have a playoffs? Let's say and Pat Mahomes catches COVID and he has to stay home or yeah. like, you know, or something on that level, right? Like, I yeah. don't think the NFL can afford that kind of season. So I am interested to see how they're going to go about it. Uh, a bubble is so much harder for the NFL and baseball just because the teams are so large. Uh, I think yeah. the NFL is more doable than baseball because they just have less games, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. And then I wanted to ask, what is it like to be in a division against Patrick Mahomes? <laughs> Man, it's not confidence inspiring. I can tell you that much. It's uh... – <laughs> I mean, I, I love the Chargers defensive backfield. I love, I mean, I, I, I think they have a really good, well, they got a d good D line. They have great DBs. Um, but I mean, there's only so much you can do against Patrick Mahomes. Um, yeah. It, oh, he, yeah. The plays he can make. How, how long is his extension? 10 years? Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's going to be into our 40s. <laughs> yep. I don't, man. Uh, our, our daughters. Yeah, we're going to be in the end of elementary or early middle school by the time Patrick Mahomes is done. Oh, it's that's yeah. scary to think about, to be honest. It, it is very scary. Uh, man, and then I don't the other, want to think about it. Right. The other thing I did want to ask is, uh, and I hate bringing up bad topics to every guest, but it's just with the teams that you're fans of, I'm just curious. Um, I don't know how old you were when Drew Brees moved from San Diego to New Orleans, mm -hmm. but – I, I do remember vividly reading it in the paper and thinking, what are they doing? Was that a thought that you had going in when that happened? Um, well, when that happened, actually, uh, I mean, with the injury that happened to him, sure. the, uh, I guess the energy around the city was like, okay, it makes sense. I mean, cause he, he'd just gotten hurt. I mean, they drafted Philip Rivers in the first round and we were just thinking, Hey, like, I guess this is the move, but I mean, in hindsight, Drew Brees is one of the goats now. Do you, so I don't remember the order of how it happened. Did you draft Phillip Rivers before he left? Yeah. Is that how it happened? Okay. He was well, you guys, backup, technically so draft, you guys technically drafted Eli. Eli. He wanted yeah. out. Yeah. 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 I think it was uh, – I think they drafted Eli and then traded him for the picks of Phillip Rivers and Sean Merriman. But I might – If I that's might be the case, that's Sean a great Merriman. trade. That's the case. Yeah. That's a great trade. I think it was yeah. Sean Merriman. It was somebody. But uh, yeah, they got some picks out of it. Um, Do you ever think what if? Because I mean, L, that was when LT was there, right? Like, yeah, it was when LT was there. Oof. I think, man, I, I think with the O line that the Chargers had, it was, it was terrible. But I think Drew Brees might have been able to do a little bit more with that, mm -hmm. with his mobility, but getting around the pocket. Um, I think that it could have. If they brought him back, maybe a Super Bowl, maybe. I mean, they had that fourteen. Um, is that fourteen and two season? Like Philip Rivers, was it his second year as a starter? I don't remember. Um, but yeah, it was. If they had Drew Brees back then, then maybe, maybe things would have been better. All right, so I have a segment called Over or Under. I am gonna give you a topic and a number, and then you tell me if you want over or under. Uh, you can tell me why or you don't have to. So over or under, Luka Doncic, is there five players better than Luka right now in the NBA? Five better today? Yes. G give me 10 seconds to think about sure, it. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, take your time. All right. I mean, today, I, I would still take – I mean, we're, we're not talking about, like, to build a franchise around for the future. Are we talking about, like, today we're going to play? Let's say, yeah, one game, game, you need to win it, right. And one you, game. your first pick on a player in the NBA, is there – I guess the real thing you're picking is, is there six guys you would pick over Luka? 
Yeah. So if I want to win a game today, I'm taking LeBron, AD. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking Giannis. I'm taking James Harden over Luca today. Um, but I mean, and then this is where I get to a little iffy. I think I would still take, I think I would still take Kawhi. I would take those five over him today. But I think if I'm starting a franchise, yeah. Um, if I'm starting a franchise, I would probably take Luca over all of those guys, except maybe Giannis. Oh, no, I agree with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because of the age, right? Yeah, because, right. I mean, what he's doing at 21 is insane. Um, right. It's crazy, man. Right. But if I, I would – so there are five guys better than him today if, the, if we're going to get a game going, but I would take Luca for the future. All right, no, I, I, I like that answer. All right, so your man, Playoff P. So I read the stats of his shooting. So let me just read you his points per game. It's at 17.3 so far. Over or under, Paul George will average 20 points a game for the playoffs. For the playoffs. I'm going to say over just because I want to believe it. <laughs> I want to believe it. I have to believe it for the Clippers to get to the ship. So I have to. In my heart, and my, <laughs> I'm gonna say over, man. But, but I'm not. I'm not gonna make a bet. I'm not gonna make a bet. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but I'm gonna say over. Okay, okay. Wishful thinking. All right, all right. Your San Diego Chargers were five and eleven last year. Yeah. To start off the Justin Herbert era, over or under, they will have eight wins this season, with a full sixteen game season. I'm going to push. I'm, I'm going to say that they're going to land right at eight and eight. Okay. Okay. Um, Do you that's, think that's you are I the second best team in the division right now? Um, good question. I mean, I guess the question is, finish- you think you're better than the Raiders, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could see them finishing second. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think with, with a new QB in Denver, I think that they can finish eight and eight and that could be good enough for second. Uh, I think, so I, I so Tyrod Taylor is going to start off the year starting QB. I'm hoping somehow they'll sign Colin Kaepernick. Anthony Lynn has had quotes this off season saying that Kaepernick is on his emergency QB um, practice list or to bring in for, for a tryout. I'm hoping that actually happens. I think that that'd be amazing. He is better than what they have on the roster right now. I uh-huh. think if they put him in the situation, I think he needs a shot, and I, I think he'd be a perfect QB for their system. That'd be amazing. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So and if that happens, then I'm staying over. <laughs> <laughs> Nine and seven. Okay. All right. So your San Diego Padres, they were, they are currently right now, eighteen and twelve. So they're halfway into the 60-game season. Over mm-hmm. or under, they will win 36 games this year. I'm going to say slightly under. I'm going to say like 34. 34 sounds good. That'll get them in the playoffs, which, I mean, as a Padres fan, that hasn't happened in 10-ish years. Oh, man. Don't talk to um, me about playoffs. <laughs> Don't talk to me about the playoffs. <laughs> I'm 34, and the last time the Mariners made the playoffs, I was in ninth grade. <laughs> hey, man, but at least you had Griffey. At least no, you had... sure. No, no, no. We had a ton. We had Griffey, A-Rod, Randy Johnson, yeah. Ichiro, Felix. Like, the list goes on. How do you feel yeah. about the Manny signing? Uh, so, I think, I mean, first off, huge overpay. But I think it's kind of what you need to do you as to an organization baseball. to yeah. – uh, to show that you're committed to winning, to show that to other players on the team, to, to show that you're willing to bring in external talent from other teams. Like it, if you're put in that position where a guy like him will even take your call, yep. um, I think you got to do it. So, I mean, having Manny, having like Fernando Tatis Jr., he's the most exciting player in baseball right now. I think if the season ends today, he's the NL MVP. Um, so to have... Fernando and Manny on the left side of that infield for, for a long time. That's really exciting as a Padres fan. Like you're used to seeing guys who shouldn't even be on an MLB roster on that side of the infield. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm excited. 
I mean, 30 million a year, overpay, but hey, man, committed to winning. Let's do it. Listen, we, we've, I, we've overpaid so much on the Mariners that I act in, in baseball too, you have to. Like yeah. to lure anyone away, unless like you have a championship team already set and you, they think they're going to win a ring, you have to overpay. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I think, that, I think that was a good move. And, it'll, I mean, and eventually, it'll get people in the seats too. You can't, yeah. unless you're winning a ton of games, or I guess if you're, you know, the Yankees or something or the Red Sox, like they're not going to go to the games if you're not winning or if you don't have stars. So, yeah. Or the Mariners, uh, we are pretty much what you were saying about the Chargers and Rams, that we have a lot more visiting fans, and they treat it as, you know, and when the Red Sox plays, it almost feels like a road game. And it's yeah. a terrible feeling. And yeah. it's, 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 yeah. My wife grew up in Boston, too. So is we, she really? Yeah. Oh, is she a Red Sox fan? She is a Red Sox fan. Oh, man. Um, she moved from Korea when she was eight, moved to Boston, grew up loving the Red Sox. So we... We go to Red Sox Angels games every year. It's like a tradition, just so That's she can awesome. watch the Red Sox. Oh um, wow! But she she's a fan of a lot of winning teams, unlike me. Right, because she, she's a Patriots the, fan. The, she's a Red Sox Boston fan. And the Celtics. <laughs> yeah, they've all, and including the Bruins, they've all won in her lifetime. Yep. Padres, Chargers, Clippers. No. Man, <laughs> I've know, had I've had nothing in my lifetime. So I've actually had this conversation uh, with my friend Jesse, Jesse Barrera, that he's also from San Diego, that I always thought Seattle fans had it the worst. And then he like had to correct me. And I was like, huh, I never really thought about it. But the fact that I never even think about San Diego shows you know, <laughs> that, right? Because like, yeah, if you won, I would see it on the screen, the parades and all that. I think it will happen at some point for one of the squads that you mentioned, because they're all they're not the Knicks. They're not, you yeah. know, ran. They, they all look like they're trying. And they, they look like they're doing the right pieces to get there. So I, my fingers are crossed for you, man. Because, yeah, I mean, we've only is... won once in my lifetime. But that one alone, I keep thinking about to last me. And I keep telling all my friends, I'm so glad we went to the championship parade, even though it was freezing yeah. cold. Because I don't know if we're going to get one more of these. You know, yes. Yeah. Like, this is the best position I've ever been in as a, as a fan of these three teams like the Clippers have a chance at the championship the Padres have a chance to get I mean anything can happen in the baseball yes. playoffs like the right Nationals now especially won. right especially yeah. right now yeah Six, 60 game season yeah last year I mean nobody thought the Nationals were going to take it well not anything can happen the Mariners are not going into <laughs> the playoffs and winning the World Series not a lot of things can happen. happen anything can happen for you <laughs> right now <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of things can happen. We'll see. Sure. So a question I've been asking everyone is, uh, if your team won, are you going to the championship parade? Man, I don't even know if they'll have one. True, true, true. I don't know I mean, if cities have thought about it. I, I guess it depends on which city wins. Yeah. Like, I've, I've talked to my wife about this quite a bit. Like, this is the this is the most exciting it's been as a Clippers fan. And like it, if they happen to make the championship, I can't even go to any of the games. So that's kind right. of a bummer. I mean, there, right. there's bigger things to worry about in the world, but it, for them to be this good at this time, I just sure. feel like it's, it just, you, it's the life of a Clippers fan. Do you feel closer already to winning a championship than any of the Lob City teams brought to you? Uh, I do um, because – Kawhi's been there. Kawhi's done yeah. it twice. Um, I I feel like he can do it again with this squad. Um, and even though that the Clippers had CP3, had Blake Griffin, had DeAndre, like with them, he always felt like something was going to happen, like something mm. bad was going to happen. I never, mm. I never felt good about them in the playoffs. Like Intr that three, to, that. That series against the Rockets when they were up 3-1 five years ago. <laughs> up 3-1, game six, up 19 in the fourth quarter. And then they end up losing that lead, losing three games in a row, getting knocked out of the, con not, knocked out of the playoffs before the conference finals. Like, for some reason, I just felt like that would happen as a Clippers fan. This is the I first time I felt like we can get past that kind of stuff. 
I don't mean to only bring up bad memories. I apologize for all of this. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, I mean, good, good thing for your Padres. Listen, uh, a few days ago, they hit another grand slam, which was four straight games with oh, a yeah. grand slam, a first time in MLB history. So, which leads into the next segment of this or that. Mm-hmm. Which do you think is harder, this or that? Hitting a grand slam four straight games in a row? Or batting 400? Uh, I, I think batting 400, just because you have to do it over such a long period of time. Uh, Is anyone close right now? I, I didn't actually I, check this. I should have checked this. I In think the uh, Char- season, maybe. Yeah, it might happen. Like Charlie Blackman on the, the Rockies the last time I looked is like at 4 or 15 or something. Oh, wow. And then on the Yankees, I think DJ LeMay, he was over 400, but I think he got hurt. Any uh, any average statistic is gonna have an asterisk this year because it's so shortened. Like yeah, I don't think people are respected if somebody no, does it anyway. No way, no way, no yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, so pretty much you've already given us this answer, but I just want to ask just to read the amount of draft picks you've given away. So this <laughs> this or that is with this current Clipper team. Would you want Paul George or Shea Gillis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, and all the draft picks back? Let me read the draft picks out loud. Oh, yeah. Please do. The, Please 20, do. the 2021 Miami Heat first round draft pick. The 2022 Clippers first round draft pick. The 2023 Miami Heat first round draft pick. The 2024 Clippers first round draft pick. The 2026 Clippers first round draft pick. And then you're swapping picks in 2023 and 2025. Yeah, that is a huge load. And I asked that Scott is. this. I asked Scott Yoshimoto this question a few weeks ago, and he said, "You can't ever tell." I mean, and I agree that trades you have to visit later after everything unfolds. And then Tom the week before said, "You guys got robbed, right?" So uh, the first question will be, "Do you want Paul George on this team, or do you want everything back with this current Clipper team?" So, I would. If we're not considering the quiet part of the equation, like let's not think about what would happen there. I easily would take everybody back and all the picks, but I mean, Kawhi wouldn't have signed without so, that happening. So, unfortunately. So do you think we should look at this trade as not Paul George for all of this, but Kawhi and Paul George for all of this? Yeah, that, that, that's how I've always looked at it, but I wish I could go back in time and and someone <laughs> could convince Kawhi, hey, the team would be a lot better if he just signed and we kept everything. I know, I know that Kawhi will never answer this because he doesn't really like yeah. to talk in the first place. But where do you, what do you think he would have done if the Clippers didn't get this done? Do you think he would have stayed with Toronto? I feel like he would have stayed with Toronto. So, so no chance that LA get, uh, the Lakers get him. Man. That would have been terrible <laughs> nope. for the league. That would have been, been terrible, terrible for, for the league. Yeah, I don't know if I would have even watched the NBA this year. <laughs> that would have just... I think you'd, you'd watch to try to see them lose, right? That's yeah. what would happen. It's like, like with the Warriors. <laughs> well, the, like the first two years of the Warriors being amazing, it was fun to watch them just destroy oh, yes. records. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then by like the third season with KD, I'm just like, okay, that's enough of this. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. So the last segment is top five dead or alive. And I'll give you a category and a list and you just, ra- you don't have to rank them in order, just your mm-hmm. top five personally. So top five dead or alive, top five San Diego sports athletes. So this okay. can be anyone who played there professionally, collegiately, high school too. Okay. I mean, first off, you got to go Tony Gwynn. Absolutely. I mean, so many streets named after him for a reason Padres legend SDSU legend as a coach he did so much for the community I mean even his son right now he's he's in the community he he uh he played for the Padres like he Tony Gwynn just left a huge legacy yep that even if like Fernando Tatis Jr. ends up being a better player than him like I don't think that anybody could ever knock Tony Gwynn off as the biggest Padres legend and the biggest sports legend of the city no, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and I mean, also on top of everything he did as a baseball player, 
He's a starting point guard for SDSU. Dropping dimes. He was, I think he was drafted by the Clippers, too. No, uh, really? Yeah, I think he was drafted wow. by the Clippers. Actually, let me do it. Quick fact check. Quick yeah, fact yeah, yeah. check. Um, he was taken by the San Diego Clippers in the 10th round. This is when there were 10 rounds in the NBA draft. <laughs> so, I mean, he was a solid college basketball player, but I mean, he, he was drafted by the Padres and the Clippers. So San Diego all around. Um, so Tony Gwynn, number one for sure. Um, next, going down the list, I think you got to go Junior Seau. Um, his, I mean, he played at, he played football at Oceanside High School. Um, so that's North County, San Diego. Uh, I played, I mean, th- actually, I played in the same league as, as that high school, like 20 years after he played there. But Oh, wow. Um, so he, he's just a legend in high school football down here, probably the best high school football player of all time in San Diego. Um, probably the most well-known Chargers player ever. I mean, yeah. he has um, his restaurant. He had a restaurant called Seals that was like the most popping restaurant in the city while he was on the Chargers. Um, so it's a shame what happened to him. Um, yes. But he, he is, a, I would say he's number two on that list. He had legend. His personality. I mean, yeah, legend. He just had so much energy on the field, off the field. He was, he did so much for the community here. I mean, people love him. Yeah. Um, legend for sure. Um, next going down, probably LT, LaDainian Tomlinson. I mean, running backs have a pretty short shelf life in the NFL, getting yes. hit so much. Uh, but he was, uh, the things he did on the field, he had, it was like a 30 plus touchdown season. Once when he won that MVP. Yeah. Um, but he was, uh, I would definitely say LT is up there. I mean, just like with Philip Rivers and Drew Brees, the Chargers wasted his best years <laughs> with the franchise. Um, so that's, that's unfortunate, man. Uh, but I, I would say LT. Yeah. So he's number three. Next, I'm going to go Kawhi. Yeah. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, San Diego State basketball. Um, he really – so I've been a San Diego State basketball fan um, since 2000 because my o- oldest brother went there. Oh. Uh, so I was going to games since 2000, 2001. Oh, they wow. were one of the worst teams in the country back then. Do you know uh, what year Steve Fisher went there? So that was around when he started, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, um, so he built that program up. Yeah, but, he's done a great job with them. Yeah, like he was able to get Kawhi to come in. He was Mr. California basketball coming out of Riverside. Um, he, he just electrified the city for two years. Like he, he brought oh, – I think they, he brought SDSU to the Sweet 16 yeah. against Kemba mm-hmm. Walker. Um, almost took down Kemba Walker in the year where UConn that won. Match score. Yeah. yeah, that was a huge game. Like they had a legit chance to take down Kemba. Um, Kemba was on a crazy run that year. Yeah, that that yeah. I don't know if we've ever seen a tear like that in the tournament. Is yeah, man. But, so, but Kawhi, Kawhi has has the city's heart. I mean, even though it's just college basketball, I mean, San Diego rides for Kawhi wherever he goes. Um, and he actually lives in San Diego now, and he like takes, he drives up to LA for for practice. Oh wow! And, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so he, he he's still here. I mean. Not really in the community because he, he's just doing his own thing at home. Sure. No, he has a different personality yeah. than everyone you've mentioned before, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Like, so those four. Um, so five, there's, there's a few people that I can say are like sure. in. So I'm, I'm just going to throw out a few names. Um, so Trevor Hoffman's definitely a candidate for number five. Closer for the Padres. Hall of Famer. Um, Philip Rivers is, is a candidate for that five spot. Um, but I'm going to go Bill Walton because he, he went to high school here and he's done so much for basketball in San Diego. Um, all of his sons played, played high school basketball here. He would randomly show up at my high school basketball games and just like be, <laughs> be saying crazy stuff in the crowd. Uh, <laughs> people in San Diego love him. Like he'll show, randomly show up at Padres games, sing on the loudspeaker, um, play with a band at, at Petco park at the park. 
Um, so he's just, he's a dude who's just always in the community. Came back to San Diego after his NBA career, after he played with the Celtics, after he played with the Blazers. And like, he's a dude that even though he never played for a San Diego professional team. But didn't like, he play for the Clippers? Uh, actually, yeah, he played for the Clippers for one year, one year, two years. So I take that back. So before the Clippers moved, he was here. It was, they were just forgettable years. Uh, before we go, I do got to say happy birthday to the late, great Kobe Bryant, yeah. uh, which is an interesting thing because uh, I met Mike the day before Kobe passed at a wedding. Shout out to Bernice and Rob. Uh, without them, I wouldn't know Mike either. Uh, Kobe, I think, and as I was watching all the commercials today, he definitely influenced the generation that we're watching on court right now. And yeah. I think it's, it's tragic. And then if we had to look at the positive side is that his legacy is cemented in greatness and being competitive and trying to better yourself. And especially father to girls, as such as we are, mm -hmm. I think it was incredible to watch him grow into a great father of uh, four beautiful girls. So I like to say happy birthday to Kobe. Is there any yeah. Kobe story you want to mention being growing up in SoCal? Man, like I, I, like being a Clippers fan, it was always so painful to watch the Lakers with Kobe and Shaq. And, and like I, it hurt a lot to like always see Kobe win chips. <laughs> always do all that so like i was always like i always admired his game i always admired his passion but just just the fact that he kept winning <laughs> like <laughs> man just stop let the clippers have something so i mean from an outsider's perspective like kobe just always had that passion he always had that will to win yeah um and i think like after he retired i really started appreciating him more what he did post career giving back to the back to the players like he had yeah i forget what that espn plus series was um but where he he does like one oh, when he breaks players. down the games yeah 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 like yeah that, like i always just thought of him as like a dude who always would do whatever it took to win yeah but i never appreciated his his love and understanding of the game until he did that like sure. his his knowledge of the x's and o's of the game Right. And also how he wanted to give back to the young players. Like, uh, I'm not trying to hit on like Michael Jordan or anything, but MJ never did anything like that after he retired. Like he, he's trying to, he got in the owner's box of the Charlotte and um, he's just doing his thing. But Kobe, like he made it a mission to give back to the game. I, I definitely think that Michael and hearing what he said at Staples Center uh, during Kobe's memorial and seeing what he's doing lately during, for the Black Lives Matter movement and everything too is I think LeBron and Kobe definitely influenced Michael. Like they're a different yeah. generation of superstars. And I don't mm -hmm. think Michael would have been even where he is now without Kobe and LeBron. Because I think yeah. in that it's too is – because I, I don't think I've ever – thought of Michael anything other than just a really great basketball player and he's has really yeah. good sneakers you know and yeah. <clears throat> excuse me Kobe and LeBron you can say so many things about them beyond just playing basketball too and I think that is very admirable and it's it's a amazing thing to see because after all we have to take all of this into our daily lives and personal lives. And I mm -hmm. promise next time, Mike, that when we have you on, I won't only bring up topics that is a bad memory. Because even with all of this, it revolves back to losing. And Kobe, <laughs> Kobe tore up all of our teams. Like he oh, yeah. Like, everyone. Yeah, he, he destroyed everyone. So, yeah, shout out to Kobe. Thank yeah. you, Mike. So we can, we can share in that. We can share for in that. Sure. Kobe destroyed everyone. For sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, for being on. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate it. Had a great time talking sports with you. Um, and re really looking forward to the next time for sure, man. Absolutely.